Hi there, and welcome back to another Bob Lass. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge. Obviously, I'm in a workshop here in Sarasota, Florida. And what you're about to see now are little snippets that I do little demos here and there throughout the day for a couple of days. This is fantastic. And so you're gonna see me doing all different kinds of little quick demos. Hope you enjoy this video. This is Painting 101. And for those of us who have not had the opportunity to take a lot of workshops or just, you're just beginning. Um, this is the very first thing they teach you in high school. Very first thing. And I talked to you about the values, the grayscale. You would hate me if I made you take every color and do the grayscale. It takes us weeks in art school. And uh, so I did the, the brief summary of when paint comes out of the tube, it's the darkest it's ever going to be. That color. <clears throat> I like to point out that that's a 10, that's a 10, and that's a 10. Now your brain says, but wait a minute, this is brighter. Yes, that's true, but that's the darkest that color is ever going to be, that color. So that's a 10. Our brain plays tricks on us. That's a 10. This is a 10. Okay, so this takes a while for it to sink in a little bit. So in art school, they tell us you always start off with a mid-tone. Zero to ten. Ten being the darkest of a color, zero being all light. So you start off with a five. You start off with a five, which means you're halfway finished. You put that five value over the entire, the entire paper. So then if I put off, start off uh, with a five, a mid-tone, you're halfway done. I just have to now put in my darkest darks and my lightest lights, and I'm finished. We make it so much more complicated. All right, so paper towel. I'm just gonna do a black and white. We're gonna do an object. Start off with an object, like a ball. It's so simple, if you can paint this ball, I guarantee you, you can paint anything. From the ball, I started doing the pears and fruits and vegetables and things like that. So here we go. Here's my watercolor paper. It has been gessoed and it's dry. And I'm gonna put down a mid-tone over the entire piece. There you go. It took seconds. Now how do I know that that's a mid-tone? I can see all three values now. There's my lightest light, there's my darkest dark. So far it's pretty simple, isn't it? But nobody in this class is doing that. That's why I say put down your dominant color. So I am not going to put down my mid-tone. Here we go. And we're going to paint something so simple. But again, if you can paint this, you can paint anything after this. If you stick with this principle. Plenty of water on my brush. Right? We're going to paint a simple ball. A simple ball. There you go. And this ball is sitting on a table. <coughs> so remember, this could be a fruit, a vegetable, an orange, a banana, a pear. Now here's where we get into trouble. A lot of you will ask me, well, where, it doesn't have that punch. I'll ask you this question. Where's your light coming from? Where's the light coming from? I go, light? Yeah. How do you know where you put the shadow? Shadow? Yeah. That way, if you have, know where your light's coming from, you know where your light's, your, your shadow's going to be. So on a table sometimes, I've seen people actually put an arrow to help them. This is where my light's coming across. This is where my light is. So, okay, this is, we're going to paint the moon for a ball on a table. With white on my brush, short, choppy strokes. In, out, in, out, in, out. Out. But be careful. Many of us start blending, blending. This is, this is not a digital piece of artwork where you're blending all the colors. This is showing your passion. Show the brush marks. You don't want to show the brush marks. Yes, you do. It's a painting. It's not a digital, flat, soulless digital artist. Well, hit me on that one. 
I need to know the difference. When you see a real painting and something done on digital, one has soul, one has the fire in the belly, and the other one has perfection. For me, painting is not perfect. So, light's coming across here, think of a big ball, and I'm going to now put the light on this side of the ball. Let some of that black <coughs> peep, uh, peep through. It's a painting. Now, if this is in a pitch black room, imagine we're in a pitch black room, and I put a ball here on the table, and I give Kathy a flashlight. She's shining, it's gonna look like this. But one of the things about a flashlight, it's got the, the beam of light continues past the ball and shines on the wall back here. So what's gonna happen is this. Short, choppy strokes. So if that was a person, the I'd do the same thing if it were a person. The person would have the white on one side and it would go past them. There you go. All right, so now I have my midtone done. I just have to put in my darkest dark. Remember, this is a pitch black room. So on this dark side of the moon, think of the moon, there's no straight line. Short, choppy strokes. Don't blend it, it's not an airbrush. All right. And now I'm gonna put, dark. remember, it's in a pitch black room. Wouldn't that be lighter on that side? That's what light? you think, no. No. This is a spotlight. This is a single beam of light. This is a very dramatic theatrical spotlight. If I had a garage door and opened up, that would be a natural light. Just like a, just like a garage door. You open up the garage door, everything's bright around your Mercedes. And as you go deeper into the garage, closer to the washer and dryer machine, it gets darker. That's normal. Think of a Vermeer painting girl with a golden ring. She was by there, or the person sewing. She was by the window because that's where the light came from. But as you went across the painting, Chiara Sturdo, a wonderful Italian word. The Chiara Sturdo, it's, it gets darker and darker and darker, away from the light source. This is more theatrical. This is a spotlight. Jeez, I wonder what kind of lighting Bob likes. <laughs> theatrical. So now we have this line down here. You don't want to do that. I'm going to blend it just a little bit. Without blending it, it's, think of the French Impressionist, short, choppy strokes, short, choppy strokes. Now I'm also going to make sure, in case you missed it, where the light's coming from, I'm going to help the viewer and put a nice, strong shadow. Shadow goes up way from the light source, not towards the light source. All right. So I'm going to lighten up the table so you can see it, see the shadow a little bit better. I'm going to lighten up the table here just a little bit. Look at the size brush I have. Large brushes. You have a tendency to get the smallest brush. Whatever brush you have in your hand, put it back. Get the next one bigger. There's my table. There's my table. There's my nice long shadow. I'm going to my brush. I'm going to do not blending. There we go. And I want to kick it up even more. By kicking it up more, I'm going to make it more contrasting. More contrast. If you do this with black and white for a while, after a while, I'm going to suggest that you practice this with color, too. And there you go. So simple. So what we really have here, I like to paint with my fingers. What we have here is dark against light, dark against light. Every time you get into trouble, dark against light, dark against light, very dramatic. Ten against one, ten against one. And I think one of the things we're all running into is that all your values are like three, four, and fives. Six, seven, eights. So the black would be a ten. Yes, I hope but so. But the white next to it, isn't that a ten two? Because it's two words? <laughs> no, don't do the two words there. Ten two, T W O no. Ten also? Yeah, ten also. No, not with white. So this is a zero on a gray scale. Black to white. Black to nine to eight and then down to zero. So that's zero. So this is very dramatic. It's not soft and gentle. Remember, if you want your painting to be dramatic, you're going to have a 10 next to a one, six next to a three. If you want your painting to be really soft and gentle and quiet, like a foggy morning, you're going to have a two next to a three, six next to a seven. That's so basic. And yet none of us pay attention in that every time we jump ship, 
like that, the painting starts to become anemic. This is a very dramatic painting. And then I translate that into color later on. Yes? I think a couple of us were trying to figure this out yesterday. I think our confusion is that if that white were yellow, and you that, that really trying to make it more confusing. And you held up the yellow paint yeah. and said, this is a 10. This is a 10. That's why I think she's saying, OK, you have a 10 that's a black and a 10 that's a yellow, so you have two 10s. No, 10 that's, that's, that's a white. Right, so yeah. that's where it's, you understand the confusion. Um, now I understand it. If, if, the, if that were yellow, it would be just a little bit darker than white. It would still be yellow. Well, let's find out, shall we, boys and girls? <laughs> There's your yellow. See if I can fall apart on this one. I'm adding white to it. Crap, not a pen. There's some red. I was taking away my So how does how this translates into all these other things? So back in here with white. Pick it up. Let's even bring some color over here. You want to bring some color in here? Again, it's all about values. So you make that into a pear, I mean, or a piece of fruit, and vegetable. It's still dark in here. If you wanted to, I'm going to put some. Uh, let's put some blue in here. Remember that black and white paint that we started out with? Yeah, which I didn't get a picture of. <laughs> this is how the color starts to work. This is how the color starts to work. So Good question. Thank you. The blue became the pen. Well, it's, a, it's, it's darker than that. There you go. Painting is so easy. <laughs> and painting is so easy if you think this way. Dark against light, dark against light. And that's how that starts. If you put, I think, I think what she's trying to say is that if you put black and yellow out of the two together, mm -hmm. the yellow Keep would, going. <laughs> the yellow would yellow. be yellow is a 10. Yeah, the, there would be a huge contrast. Oh, so after a while, stop using your adult brain and be a painter. Okay. <laughs> there's, there's, no, there's no magic formula. The magic formula is you do this a hundred times. You want to have a strong light source. Otherwise, it's going to be like a foggy day. All the values are really close. Right. It's also called practicing. Yeah. I practice like crazy all the time. I take the pressure off of myself. Is this right? Is this wrong? That's not part of painting. That's, it's nothing but a series of what if. What if I try this? What if I do that? If it doesn't work, oh well, thank goodness for gesso. Let's do it again. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. This is called practicing. Practicing. Uh, to gain more confidence in anything you do, you all know you got to practice. Here's my <coughs> midtone. They're all not going to be perfect. We all fall down. We all fall down. Even runners fall down. The winners get up quicker. It's that simple. So if you fall down, just know that means you're doing your best. You can, your legs aren't cooperating with your speed and all that. So here we go. We're going to do the same thing with lighting for coming from the side. Here's my arrow. It tells me a mite's got to be coming here. Right. Well, let's go over here. Do our carrots, right? That's our land. Okay. Pretty straightforward here. Now I want. To, now we did black here, didn't we? I don't want the black, so I'm going to have white here. I'm taking paint away now. 
because it's still wet. This is the same principle as the ball we just got finished seeing. It's still wet, so I can take a lot of it away. I could also add white if I wanted to. Wiping it away even more so. Oh my. Just like the ball. Play it on this side. Now let's go for some drama. Remember I showed you light or dark over here? I'm just doing black and white at this point. I've never done this painting before. Yeah, we can tell. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've never done this painting before. But I'm using the same principles. Yeah. No, I'm not kidding you. You've never seen me do a painting like this. No, I now haven't. the ball. Shadow here, here's your land. We'll put in here a shadow. Again, the shadow helps to anchor the whole figure. This is basically what I'm doing at this point. You get the values down first. I can start playing with color later on. Okay. The shadow goes towards the light. No, the shadow goes away from the light source. It's on the <laughs> this is where your it's dyslexia like, kicks oh, in. Oh, I'm looking at the I know. We all go through that, by the way. Yeah, we all do this. Just know that you're nor no, you're not normal. Anybody in this room is not normal. So <laughs> celebrate your difference. Dark against light. If it's not dark enough, make it darker. And I kind of blend it a little bit, just a little, not a whole lot. And that's why I have my, my values down. Now I can start putting in my transparent colors on top of it. Or I could have actually painted it this way. Looks pretty moody here, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I like it. I do too, thanks, I like it too. But I like to anchor it also. It helps to ground, ground the subject matter. There you go. Dark light, dark light, practice that. I hope that helps a lot of you in this class. Uh, where you, you might be so confused with color. Oh, thank you. you start off with, with a black and white first. And after a while, do it again, but only in color. Like maybe all dark blue, ultramarine blue. Then try one in red. Try them with different colors until it becomes so automatic. We call that automatism. I think Robert Motherwell coined that phrase. If you do the same thing over and over and over and over, like tying your shoes, you won't even be thinking about tying your shoes because it does become muscle memory. And that's the only way to get better is called practice. And look, it's a small piece. And that's what a good beginning that will be. Well, that's it for me. I'm Bob Burridge. I hope you enjoyed this video, but I gotta get back to class and throw some more paint around. See you in the next Bob last. Hi there, you caught me doing my favorite thing by myself in the studio. I'm doing abstract acrylic painting and collage. Right now I'm painting. By the way, this is the kind of stuff I'm going to be doing a lot of this year. Uh, the abstract acrylic painting and collage workshops all over the place. We do the crazy stuff with tissue paper from candy boxes, big sheets of black paper, craft paper. We make our own stencils with stencil spray cans. Lots of alcohol, water, acrylic sprays. Wonderful. Gel medium, that's our glue for everything gel medium. And we start off small, these little ones in the morning, these are warm-up practice pieces. And you can see I'm working on some of them all at the same time. It's one of the things that's so much fun in this class. <laughs> so again, 
I even had to write it down because it's a mouthful for me. Abstract, acrylic, painting, and collage. Hey, I'll see you there. Excuse me while I go collage. Do it, do it. So, Bob, where can they find out about these workshops? Go to my website. <laughs> it's all there. RobertBurridge.com.